I'd like to begin the meeting, and I do that right now. I'd like to introduce my outgoing board president. Um, he's been a great guy, and he's helped me a lot. I learned a lot from him. Please welcome Jay Hart. Well, uh, good afternoon, and welcome to the 23rd Take TV annual meeting. Uh, thank you all for coming. Uh, what I'm going to, I'll just tell you a quick thing here. I have worn glasses for 40 years. And last December and January, I needed to get cataract surgery. So I could, before I had cataract surgery for the last 40 some years, 60 years, I could see close up, but I couldn't see out here. Well, they asked me, what do you want to do? Do you want to see far or see near? So when they put in the cataracts, I said, well, let's try something different. <clears throat> so let's just say, you all look great. <laughs> Last year's crowd was a little sketchy looking, a little blurry, but you all look great. So I still now need glasses to see near, and I look like that, what are you doing kind of guy over the top of the brim. But uh, again, Thank you all for coming here. I, I appreciate it. I've got to get used to taking them off to look afar or, or just peeking over the top. Um, again, I'd like to thank everyone who's involved in preparing for our annual meeting. Uh, did, did a wonderful job, and, and thank you. I would like to just take a quick moment to uh, just reflect on the seven years that I've been with Take TV as a member of the Board of Directors. Uh, this will be my last annual meeting as a board member, and, uh, but it has been a real pleasure to work with the dedicated Take TV staff and the Board of Directors, um, and also along with the community members that I've had the opportunity to interact with. So um, it's been very satisfying, very rewarding, and uh, it's been, been my pleasure. With that, I would like to convene the meeting at this time. And the first order of business is, may I have a motion to approve last year's 22nd annual minutes meeting of May 14th, 2018. Ed, we have a motion and second. Second, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? The minutes are approved. I would also like to uh, introduce the uh, Pake TV Board of Directors and thank them for their guidance and hard work uh, that they've done in carrying out the mission and vision of Pake TV. So if you could stand up when I call your name, I'd appreciate it. We have uh, Priscilla Lapkin, who is our Vice President. We have Tom Poore, who's our Treasurer. Anna White, we have uh, Stephanie Wilson, Jerry Hansen, Ed Kelly, and Peg Bolzoni. And I want to give a special thank you to Peg for her six years being on the board. Her term is also coming to an end. Thank you for your guidance and the energy that you brought to the board, uh, you will be greatly missed. Here, here. Thank you, <laughs> And with that, I'll uh, introduce uh, Tom Poor, who will give the uh, treasurer's report. We're, we're going to stay with this theme of, uh, of sight. You, you, I have never had cataract surgery, and you've all looked great to me each and every year. So all of you that come back again and again, you look great. Uh, but I can't see for squat up close. Funny thing happened. Um, I know the financials pretty well. And you look at them on your iPad. And I said, well, I better print out a copy of the 2018 final financials. So I did. And I get to the car, and that's them. <laughs> I, I need like 6.0 glasses to see these. 
Um, and here's another funny thing. The millennials might not know this or anybody younger in the room. If anybody gives you a piece of paper, this doesn't work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I tried and tried with my fingers, and it still stays the same size. So <laughs> paper, paper doesn't have the same abilities that our phones have. So having said that, I will uh, try to do most of this from memory because this is going to be kind of useless. Um, we had some bad news and we had some good news financially. The bad news last year was that uh, we noticed a trend uh, starting up uh, early in 2018. We get paid like four months in arrears and we noticed the revenue starting to drop. Uh, we saw that kind of bottom out uh, right around this time um, was the first time we saw the really low check around spring of 2018 and then they continued. We had just assumed um, that it was a result of subscribers, excuse me, uh, subscriptions being down for uh, cable television. But um, as it turned out, it, it wound up being uh, mostly an auditing thing in which Comcast um, had to reprice when they, when they bundled services because they were doing so much TV alone. When they started bundling it, it actually lowers the price for people. So they weren't lowering the access fees. And so what happened is they passed that savings onto the consumer, which is a good thing, but unfortunately for us, we wound up with less revenue, not just us here in Rutland, uh, us everywhere. So um, it was actually bad news, but good news. The bad news was obviously we're operating with about 8% less revenue. Uh, the good news is that there was not a downward trend in terms of subscriptions, so that our revenue has plateaued, hit a bottom, and now hopefully it will start coming back up a little. The other good news is that um, we didn't suffer a loss and we didn't have to lay anybody off, although we did have to downsize our staff. Um, at the time, we had a couple vacancies and we had another person who was leaving. They were all from our access show. Access was something that we've been doing for years above and beyond our mission. And so what we did is we decided until we could see where our revenue was going to go for the future, we put a hold on those positions and they're still on hold. And again, we're watching. Right now, we have a balanced budget, but we'll see. We'll see where the future goes and Tommy maybe say a couple words about that later on. Um, and with that, uh, the only thing I have to say is that we did produce an $85,000 surplus. Uh, most of that came as a result of those uh, savings and salaries. We saved over $100,000 in salaries that we had budgeted. And um, even though we took about a 60,000 hit on the income side. So um, the financials came out fine. We have a balanced budget for this year. Again, the good news is that we're not on a downward trend. Uh, we seem to be plateaued, and uh, I hope that we're here for years to come. Okay, that should do it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, next up is the nominating committee, and we have three new members that we would be uh, proposing to be on the board, plus two current members up for re-election. And the proposed new board members are Jim Bouton, Steve Dardek, and Terry J. Jurassic, uh, or known as Terry J. <laughs> now, this would be for the terms 2019 to 2022. It's a three year term. We also have two current members who are up for re election for their second term, and that is uh, Priscilla Latkin and uh, Tom Poor. And that is also for the term 2019 to 2022. So if I have a, may I have a motion to approve the three new board members and the re-election of the two current members? So moved. May I have a second? Second, thank you. Uh, all in favor? Aye. All opposed? Congratulations. The, uh, Motion is approved. So welcome, uh, welcome to the board, uh, and uh, welcome to the re-election of the other uh, two board members. And next up, we'll have Tom on the executive director's report. You better drink some water. That's a, that a boy. Thank you, Jay. All right, now I'd like to uh, introduce the staff. Uh, you can make yourself known if you're still in the room. I'm in a good mood tonight because 
I'm the only one that didn't watch Game of Thrones. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently it didn't end well, I don't know. I'd like to start out, uh, this fellow here has been with us since October 90, 1999. He fills a dual capacity as the Associate Director and Channel 15 Coordinator, um, Chris McCormick, right here. And this is all in uh, order of appearance as they came to work for uh, PEG TV. Next, I have our trustworthy office manager who's been with us for 16 years, and that's Nancy Donahue. <laughs> our technical coordinator has been with us for six years, and that's Daniel Appelt. Uh, marketing and communications, which is something PEG TV does very well, is due to Amber Dumas. She's been in that capacity for two years now. Uh, Channel 21 coordinator's been with us for four years, Chelsea Tice. And the very talented Brent Doan, who is recording tonight's event for a later use. Uh, Channel 20 coordinator for four years, Rindon. <laughs> and on program development for four years, Missy Delahanty. <laughs> Did I get everybody? I'd also like to mention uh, we have some folks that you don't always see in this room because they usually work or cover meetings. We call them stringers. Uh, they've been with us for a very long time. I'd just like to mention them really quickly. And uh, Rich Ziegler, um, he's been covering the Board of Aldermen for many years, and that goes out live, uh, except for tonight, because most of us are here. He's, at, he's out there recording it right now. Uh, Bill Shimalewski, Bob Miller, also known as Miller Time, <laughs> Jay Lukey, Arlen Brudworth, Jimmy Britt, and Hope Rogers. So give them a round of applause. I'd also like to thank the Vermont Access Network for all their work, um, all the public access stations in Vermont. They're all under one umbrella. Um, and Kevin Christopher, the president, they've done a, a marvelous job of keeping tabs on everything. There's a lot going on. Um, I want to thank the Rutland County delegation and all the members that are in this room today. Uh, I was up at the State House in February, and you folks were very accommodating to me. So thank you for that. Um, at the back table, um, Tom Donahue, Nancy Gordon, helped us with live election night. It's not easy to stay on uh, the air for several hours at a time with no breaks. Um, you guys do a stellar job, and I really appreciate that very much. Thank you. <laughs> uh, a couple folks from Comcast that are always there to help us, uh, Jeff Bates, Jeff Senecal, and Greg Babcock. Uh, we also have Melissa Pierce, who is the manager for government and regulatory affairs for the Western New England region. Melissa is right here tonight. Thank you for coming. Uh, the Rutland Herald has done outstanding coverage for us this year. Anytime we've run into an event or they come on our uh, site and, and cover the event for us, I think one month we were on the front page of the Rutland Herald three times for three separate things. So I appreciate that. Um, and thank you. Thank you. Uh, Um, the Wilson family, who I know you're kind of familiar with, Stephanie is on our board. Uh, i got to give them special mention because Stephanie and Andrew help us out with the live Halloween parade every year. Um, we couldn't do it without you. If it wasn't for Stephanie, you'd be hearing just my voice on the air that <laughs> night. Thank you. On another note, Stephanie also uh, hosts this program in the studio called Pet Partners. Um, it's produced by the Rutland County Humane Society in conjunction with the Wilsons. They just celebrated their 60th anniversary, anniversary and they've been on the air for almost a little over 20 years now. All right, Steph? Yeah, so wow. congratulations to that. Uh, 
Uh, I have to mention the Rutland City Police and Sharon Davis, the President of the Board of Aldermen, uh, Chief Co. Cullen and Commander Greg Sheldon for actually giving us right of way during the Halloween parade because it's not easy to do when you don't have permission to be there. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna block the street with a flatbed truck. You have to make a few calls. So. <laughs> um, and myself, lastly, I've been executive director for four years. So. Thank you. Thank you. I want to also thank my outgoing board members and I want to welcome my new ones. Jay Hart has been my treasurer, my vice president, and president. And Nan Hart was also a president. They're the first couple to actually fill that role where they both were presidents. Uh, Nan was number six and I think Jay's number 11. So congratulations on that. Um, go ahead, you can applaud that, yeah. I'm not gonna comment on who was the best president or anything like that. <laughs> I think you actually brought Jay aboard, didn't you? Yeah, so that worked out for us. Uh, Peg Bolzoni. She thinks she's leaving, but she's not because your name's on the building. <laughs> so, two consecutive three-year terms, congratulations on that, but I know where you live, I go by your house often, so she'll be back. <laughs> Peg TV can be like the mafia in that way, you can't really get out. Uh, a couple things, you may have noticed uh, on the stadium cushions, we have a new logo this year. Um, we worked very hard for that. and. I want to thank Liz Thompson for her work on that. Um, we've gotten great reviews on that. We have a new sign, new apparel, so it was time to update that a little. A brand new weather map, which was needed, especially in this springtime, we've been having all this rain. So we'd like to remind you that it's been a rainy spring. <laughs> um, we also have a new video player to help out folks that like to watch us on their handheld device when they're driving. Uh, we wanted to accommodate that and we've also hit our 20th 25th anniversary because we were actually incorporated in 1993 so we had a big open house to celebrate that um, we changed the map a little bit in the summertime we acquired the town of Pollitt so configured a little bit so congratulations yeah <clears throat> Town Clerk of Pollard is actually right here at this table, and she also happens to be my sister. But <laughs> I had to make more than one phone call there. It wasn't just that. Um, we've had a few challenges over the year. Of course, you may have read about the ruling that FCC was proposing. Um, we do have some folks working on that. Uh, Chairman Pye of the FCC is actually being distracted now with a robocall, so hopefully he turns his attention to that because that is actually a bigger problem in my book. So um, We're still fighting to get on the interactive program guide and we're still working things out with Comcast in the state of Vermont, so we'll keep you posted there. I want to thank everybody in the room that wrote a letter to the FCC because the last time I checked, they're up to 8,400 letters, so thank you there. Uh, another big milestone that we accomplished was on October 10th, uh, we went live from two different locations at the same time for the first time ever. And I got to tell you, I was holding my breath on that one, but everything came together and we broadcast from Channel 15 in the studio and the Paramount Theater at the same time. We did the pumpkin, the Royal Pumpkin Pageant live in the studio at the same time, the gubernatorial debate was happening at the Paramount Theater, so that was quite a milestone. Yeah, thank you. And it's really due mostly to the wonderful staff we have because it's like a hit, hit band. You know, I go out on the street and everybody has their favorite. I hear different feedback from all these different organizations and I can't ever guess who they're going to say. It's either going to be this one or that one, and sometimes me, but that's one thing about Pig TV is the cohesion of the staff when there's an event, and we have amazing support from the public. Um, as you can see tonight, we have record attendance at our annual meeting, which is fantastic to see, and I thank you for that. Um, 
So with that, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker. Uh, this fellow has been a true friend to PEG TV. He's no stranger to media. He's been on the air for decades. <laughs> you know, um, he didn't actually send me an introduction because he didn't want one. He's actually a man that doesn't need any. He's a giant hockey fan. Um, we're glad to have him because the legislature hasn't actually adjourned yet. And I understand the retail pot bill is still going on. Indeed. And then, well, what they're thinking about doing is passing a joint resol <laughs> resolution in the House. <laughs> so, high time I introduce him. Coincidentally, he sits in seat number 23 in the Senate, and he's our guest speaker for the 23rd annual meeting. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian B.C., Senator Collimore. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Yep. Thank, you, right. thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here tonight. I want to thank Chris for not sitting at my table. We would have resembled the human exclamation point. <laughs> As you can see, I'm rather vertically challenged. I want to speak about how government works in Vermont and how that intersects with PEG TV. Right off the bat, I want to recognize and have the uh, legislators that are in the room stand up and tell them where they're from, in other words, who they represent. I know there's at least three who are here with us tonight. So, Tom, if you'd uh, be so kind. Tom Caradzini, I uh, represent Rutland Town in the legislature. Jim. Jim Harrison, uh, Chittenden, Menden, Killington, and Bridgewater. And I believe Dave Potter is with us as well. He's in the back. Uh, Dave Potter from Clarendon. I represent Clarendon, West Scotland, Proctor, Wallingford, and uh, Whisperton. <laughs> so I want you to remember that because. Oh, did Mary come in? I thought I saw her. Representative Howard, I'm sorry. Valentine. All right, so you have four of your representatives here. Is there anybody else I missed? And I'm one of your three Rutland County Senators. So I wanted to do that because you'll never meet somebody that had no idea about politics uh, any more than I was, late, let's say about 10 years ago. The only thing I ever ran for before was president of my fourth grade class, and I did win, but that's the only other time I ran for office. So I was, I think, pretty much a typical citizen. I'm not sure I could have told you how many legislators there were, nor how laws were made. I'm gonna tell you a little bit about that tonight. You know, we all get caught up in our day-to-day -day concerns, and what happens in Montpelier really only becomes important to us when it affects how we live our lives. I think most people will agree with that. I'd be very surprised if there's anybody in the room that followed a bill or the thousands of bills that went through the legislative process this year and followed each step of the way. I mean, maybe there is, but I, I don't think so. Usually if it affects your pocketbook, you kind of pay attention. I mean, that's the way it goes. Most folks here tonight do probably realize there's a difference between state and federal government. But I can't tell you how many times this happens. Someone will email me and ask me to vote on the NAFTA agreement, which is a federal situation, not a state one. Or they'll walk up and ask me how things are going in Washington. But the kicker came a couple of weeks ago. I'm at Staples buying something. And I get out of my car. I do have Senate license plates on the car. And this guy comes up, looking rather crestfallen, as I get out of the car, and he said, uh, you're not Bernie. <laughs> so, I explained I was a state senator, not a U.S. senator. So here we go, a quick lesson. Some of this you'll remember, some of this you won't. It doesn't really matter, I guess. Anybody know how many legislators, how many House of Representatives uh, there are in the U.S. House? 435 is the correct answer. How many senators? 100. Every state gets two. Anybody know what the deal is in Montpelier? The total of the, the two bodies? 180 is correct. Very good. There's 150 in the House and 30 in the Senate. 
And Vermont was a unicameral state, which means one body, until 1836. And it was the House of Representatives that actually created the Senate. Vermont didn't have a Senate till 1836. And until the 1960s, the Vermont legislature only met every other year. Many think that would be a pretty good idea if we went back to that. <laughs> I might be one of them. But I think it's important for you to know when you want something to become law, you either have four or five people that you can reach out. So the House is comprised of, in many cases, single member districts. Tom, for instance, Terenzini, represents Rutland Town himself. And then you have the three senators. So you have four people that you can reach out for. There are multi-member districts. Jim's one of, uh, no, Dave Potter's one of those, where he has a seatmate, so there's two plus three is five. So you have either four or five people you can reach out to uh, whenever there's something on the docket that you're really interested in. Any legislator in either body can sponsor a bill to amend, uh, amend a Vermont law. And I'm not going to go through the whole process because it is rather lengthy. But there's three readings of a bill. It's read for the first time and then referred to a committee. There are... 11 standing committees in the Senate and 13 in the House. So whatever the bill is about. If it's about agriculture, it goes to the Agriculture Committee. If it's about appropriations, it goes to the Appropriations Committee. Then the committee decides, mostly at the chair's discretion, whether or not they will take up a particular bill. They can hang it on the wall and do absolutely nothing with it if they choose. Or they can take testimony and decide whether or not to vote it out. If they do vote it out, in the Senate we have usually five members of the committee. The House has 10 or 11 for the most part. So if it gets voted out with a positive vote, it then goes to the floor in that chamber, either the House or Senate, and the reporter stands up and reports the bill out. Then that chamber votes on the bill. If it passes, it's then sent across to the other chamber, and that whole process goes through again. That's the second reading. The third reading is the final approval or not. Then we have these conference committees, which take place normally at the end of the year. If both sides don't agree, if Tom and Jim and Dave and Mary and I don't agree on a bill, it goes to a committee of conference, which is three people from each of the two chambers, and they sit down and they hammer it out. And if they can't come to an agreement, the bill dies. And if they do, whatever comes out of that conference committee becomes law, or at least it's then sent to the governor. I know this isn't really fascinating for a lot of people, but I love it. I really do. I love being up there. So the governor then has a chance. He or she, or a decision, he or she can either sign the bill into law. Most bills become effective July 1st of that year. The bill can become law without the governor's signature, or he or she can veto the bill. I can tell you right now, I think we will be back in June for a veto session. The governor's indicated that there's a number of bills that he doesn't agree with, and we'll probably go back up. In order to override the veto, in other words, say to the governor, sorry, still going to be law, you need two-thirds vote in both chambers. If one of the chambers doesn't sustain or doesn't get to the two-thirds, then the veto is sustained, the governor finds agreement, and it does not become law. So that's the process. And again, I want to just mention that it's a rather lengthy process, and it's done on purpose so that we have a chance to carefully consider, we hope, all the pros and cons. We're supposed to take testimony from both sides because every bill has pros and cons and then make a decision as to whether or not we're gonna pass it. But it's also important because that's when all of you have a chance to weigh in. So I get about 35 or 40 emails every couple days. Then I have my cell phone and I, I'll give you my cell phone number tonight if you like, and I have a landline at home. I live in Montpelier during the week, during the session, but when I come home, there's usually 15 or 20 calls that need some attention. And I pride myself on at least getting back to people one way or the other. They may not agree with the way I voted on anything, or they may agree, but I think it's up to me to get back to people. But that process, that lengthy process, is when you folks should get involved and you should know who your House representative is or are and your three senators. And call them or see them in the grocery store. Say, you know what? I don't want you to vote on that bill. I want you to vote no on that bill, and here's why. Because I'll tell you, it does make a difference. It really does. Vermont's really unique. You know, We don't have the same sort of full-time legislature that Massachusetts or New York or certainly California have. And I think those folks are a little bit isolated. 
We don't have staff. What we have is a little chair and a little desk, and that's all we get. So there's nobody else except me. So if you see me in the grocery store, you're actually affecting my vote by telling me how you think. So let's talk a little bit about how this intersects with PEG TV. Now I can remember going back to West Rutland and the high school there, and I see some Westsiders here. I was in a, in a classroom on the second floor with Joe Crowley at one point. Some of you may remember Uncle Joe. And I think we were making a pitch. I don't even know what it was for. I think it was for muscular dystrophy, but it could have been for something else. All I know is the camera went on and I started rattling the number off for people to call to make a pledge. So I can remember when Peg TV was back there and I followed the way all the way through to Pine Street and then, what, almost 15 years ago, we, we saw this beautiful building at the Howe Center. So I do kind of always have a soft spot. But right from your vision statement is the answer to how a connection is made between government and PEG TV. So your statement says that you're looking to be, quote, the highest quality public access stations in the nation, championing, championing on engaged, connected, and informed community. And that's how you do it. So to the entire staff, I know you all got introduced before, I know there have to be days <laughs> and nights when you wonder whether covering one more aldermanic or select board or school board meeting really is going to make a difference or not, and it does, it really does. Or whether a local sporting event or a talk show will matter to anyone except the people that are there, basically, but it does matter because you are keeping people connected and informed. So. I want to thank you, because I know how hard you work, and I want to thank the, the board as well for the support and guidance that you show to the staff all the time. I think it's really important. You know, Tom mentioned we did battle back with uh, the FCC. They seem determined to make changes which would affect in a negative fashion the funding for this group. And for the moment, it looks like that effort was successful. It's sort of still there, but it's on the back burner. And as Tom said, there's a whole bunch of other more important, let's hope, things that are going to occupy their attention. But I also want to make you aware of something that happened on the Senate floor on Friday. The bill was a House bill, H513. It's a bill which supports broadband deployment. The Senate added an amendment on the floor that day. I want to read it because it affects everyone here. And when this does become law, and I believe it will, in fact, I believe the conference committee came back today with a positive uh, indication on this. So it will provide at least a vehicle for funding considerations if and when the FCC ever does kind of rear up its head again. So it was a PEG access study committee that was attached to this bill. And it says there is created a PEG access study committee. Committee shall dis uh, consider changes to the state's cable franchising authority and develop for legislative consideration alternative regulatory and funding mechanisms to support public educational and government access channels and services to communities across Vermont. So I think you can see that we do care up there and we're gonna be uh, with you. So I'll close with this one, it has nothing to do with government. But every now and then I hear folks my age, I'm 68, uh, say, you know, I long for the good old days. Boy, where do those good old days go? Consider this, there are people in this room right now where today will be their good old days. That's it. So thank you very much. <laughs> thank you, Senator Kalmar. One more time, Senator Kalmar. Thank you. He actually has to drive back to Mount Peter tonight, so we are very thankful and grateful that you're here. Um, I did have to go to the State House on February 20th to meet with everybody and explain what was going on with public access, and Brian took the time to show me around because I had never been in there before, and it's amazing the amount of access that you have to the place. You can essentially go wherever you want. Um, and I got lost because every, I don't know if you've ever been to Mount Pillar, but they named every single room after Ethan Allen. <laughs> uh, even the hotels. So, like, you know, where's uh, Ethan Allen Annex B, Brian? Do you know where that is? Uh, he showed me, it's right by the statue of Abraham Lincoln. So I found the statue of Abraham Lincoln, but I never did run into the statue of limitations. So. <laughs> 
I was going to get my picture taken next to it. Uh, with that, uh, Peg TV has long ago started an award for a person that has contributed outstanding service to us um, or produced shows, many shows over the year, years. Um, and this fella that the Romeo goes to this year uh, loved animals. He was a big fan of Stephanie's show, Pet Partners. In fact, he always came in on Monday to record his show and he could tell just by looking at the screen because Pet Partners happened to be on whether or not it was an old show or not. And he'd be like, when, when is Stephanie coming back here for a new show? We've got to get a new show going on. Um, so it isn't really Monday without this fella. Unfortunately, he couldn't be here tonight. Uh, one of my favorite catchphrases to say, because um, his name is Joe Tilden. And anytime he was in the building, I would just love to say to him, I would announce, there's a Tilden in the building. <laughs> and we would have that bo boisterous laugh of his. Uh, just a nice fella all around. He's been doing programs with us forever. I mean, he's done 800 episodes of one show, several hundred episodes of a different show. Um, and he's just been a true staunch supporter of us. Uh, so the Romeo Award this year goes to him. So thank you. Thank you, Bill. Um, so to kill a few minutes, because he's not here to accept the award, I want to also acknowledge um, Peg Bolzoni again. And Missy is already here. Thank you. Um, we just got you a little something to remind you to come back to us. So you keep it right on your desk when you go home. And um, so I, I just want to thank you, Peg, for all of your service. Um, you've done a tremendous amount of work for us. You've been very strong in the Corsell Scholarship Committee, which, by the way, uh, Peg asked me to announce the names of the winners this year. And on this one, I forgot to enlarge the print, so I might need the help on it. I can do that with my fingers. Yeah. There you go. Um, the winner of the Corsell Scholarship for 2019 um, was a, a lady named Dakota Savage from Mountain High School and Stafford Technical Center Digital Arts Program. So she gets $2,000 to go towards the college of her choice that she's attending. Thank you. Um, the other Corsell Scholarship winner is uh, Isaiah Nelson from Otter Valley, who coincidentally is Bruce Nelson's grandson. If anybody oh, remembers Bruce, he yeah. was the executive director many, many years ago here at Peg TV. Oh, so wow. congratulations to them. Uh, thank you, Peg. So come on up. Come on. See if Missy can open this without breaking it. No, I have to open it. No. You want to open it? No. Sure. no that's okay. No, no. She's going to try. No. No. Don't worry, I'll put that. <laughs> no, you, hear, you heard it. You heard it. This is like thank a you. yeah. This is like a temporary <laughs> interruption. That's all. Oh, thank you very yeah, take much. Take that with you. All right, thank you. I don't handle awards anymore because I I bumped into one of them once and it broke. So, oh, okay. do you have anything you'd like to say real quick? Uh, <clears throat> well, I'm very moved uh, by all these tributes tonight, and I thank you all. It's been a real pleasure serving on the board for the past six years. I've enjoyed every moment of it, and I'm still going to be involved because I produce a show for the hospital called Window on Wellness, which airs on Channel 15. <laughs> and uh, so this isn't really goodbye, it's more of a salon. So thank you very much. Affectionately okay. known as Peg Bon Jovi. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, and lastly, I'd like to re recognize my outgoing board president, Jay Hart. He's outgoing in more ways than one. <laughs> well, um, again, you've served in many, many capacities at Peg TV. Um, you've worked many years at John Deere, who, by the way, their colors are green and gold. I believe you're the gold part of John Deere, even though it's technically yellow and it's gold. Um, so we got you a little something, too. It's a little smaller because I know you're moving. <laughs> and at a Christmas party, you're talking about all the stuff you're trying to get rid of, and I didn't want this to be one of them, so we got a little something for you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you want to take the mic one time? Uh, you got that? Yes, thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much. Yes, the, uh, as you know, or may not know, John Deere was actually born here in Rutland. And uh, so out of all, when I moved up here 31 years ago, I could have lived anywhere in New England. 
I didn't know that John Deere was born in Rutland. So out of all the cities and towns that I could pick to live in, what are the odds that I'd pick Rutland, Vermont? So <laughs> thank you. It has been a wonderful uh, trip here, and, and Pig TV has been great, and the staff and the board is in great hands, and Tom's a great leader here. Thank you. Thank you. And if you ever, if you actually haven't seen our facility, it's building 24 right over here in the house center. Uh, please come over sometime for a tour. There's usually someone there that can just give you a tour and prompt you so you don't need an appointment. It really is a very nice facility. Uh, people that have been all around the state to other public access centers refer to us as the empire. So, um, <laughs> and it took a long time to get there because when Brian was talking about the old days and we used to drive around in a a van, an old Chevy Astro that smelled like gas, and so we really have come a long way. I want to thank you again for attending. I really appreciate seeing everybody, and it's really been a pleasure to serve you. And please call Pig TV. We don't actually have a crew right now that goes out and covers events, but that doesn't mean what we can't. So if you do have something you want covered, we can't always accommodate like the access team could. Um, but if you do have something that we can kind of work on, just let us know. We're always glad to help out when we can, or maybe we can find somebody to cover your event. So with that, thank you very much. Stick around. Um, there's going to be dessert out here. I did order the apple crisp, so I hope it's there. <laughs> um, and I'll hand it back over to Jay to adjourn the meeting. Thank you very much. You. Uh, with that, may I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So moved. A second. Second. Okay. We're adjourned. Let's get dessert. <laughs>